Good morning, distinguished guests. Uh, I feel honored to be in the presence of ministers and secretaries of education. Uh, I come from a family of teachers, so it's a special uh, uh, occasion for me. I want to talk about uh, a situation that uh, all of us, uh, at least most of us, have experienced, uh, and a solution that we have sometimes seen uh, happen and wondered why it doesn't happen more. The situation is like this. Imagine yourself in a uh, town where there's a school and there's a problem of violence or drugs or bullying or other forms of troubles. The school administration and teachers, they are all well-meaning people. The parents want the best for their children. Uh, but the situation continues. It is not resolved until something happens. Uh, you can think about similar examples in a uh, place where there is an ethnic minority or religious minority, and their children need education. Otherwise, their children fall prey to uh, violent terrorist organizations. Uh, everybody recognizes their need for education to give them an opportunity so that they will not fall prey to this organization, but it is not done. The organization threatens those who want to do something, and then nobody is courageous enough uh, to do something. You can imagine other situations. And I'm going to talk about uh, a solution that actually happens. Uh, we experience, we witness it, and hopefully we draw some lessons as to how we can reproduce that solution uh, more. Uh, my organization, the Alliance for Shared Values, is a new organization. It's an uh, umbrella for dialogue and cultural organizations. Uh, most of these organizations were established by individuals inspired by Mr. Fethullah Gülen, who is a prominent uh, Turkish Muslim scholar, preacher, and social advocate. Uh, our common goal is to help build uh, a culture of living together in peace and harmony, despite differences. Uh, on what values, on what issues, on what uh, visions and concerns can we come together, uh, even if we cannot come together on other issues? And our website is not active at this moment, but we expect it to be active pretty soon. It's going to be Alliance for Shared Values, or for short, AFSV.org. Uh, the examples, I want to illustrate this concept based on some examples. And the examples come from projects uh, done by the participants of a social movement that started in Turkey. It's called uh, the Hizmet Movement by its participants. The word means service or serving in Turkish. Uh, it started out as a community uh, of pious uh, Muslims around uh, preacher Mr. Fethullah Gülen, but later it actually uh, became much more than a community. It became, uh, it is becoming a, a social movement that includes non-Turks, non-Muslims uh, in it to varying degrees. And it's also become transnational. It is no longer just in Turkey. It's uh, gone into uh, over 100 countries. Uh, it focuses on five main areas of uh, activity. Uh, the primary one is education, various forms of educational institutions, as well as individual efforts. Healthcare in the form of hospitals, clinics, and also doctors and nurses doing pro bono service. You can think of it as uh, the Turkish version of Doctors Without Borders. Uh, disaster relief and economic assistance, uh, media for the purpose of responsible, uh, socially responsible media, and also interfaith and intrafaith dialogue. There are also hundreds and maybe thousands of professional associations, both in the area of business and other professions, that uh, both promote development in their field and also uh, they support charitable projects. Uh, Mr. Gulen. Uh, has been recognized as the most influential uh, scholar and preacher and social advocate in Turkey. Uh, he was known for his stance against violence of any form. He condemned the 9-11 attacks shortly after the attacks, and he called Bin Laden a master, as a matter of fact, in an interview to a major newspaper. He supported democratization of Turkey, Turkey's potential prospective membership in the European Union. And uh, the, the themes in his discourse are roughly the themes where the movement participants build projects. And these include education, community service, social justice, a dialogue for community peace, uh, and developing a virtuous individual for the purpose of a virtuous in the society. 
Uh, some examples from these institutions include schools. These are sometimes private schools. Most of them are private schools. This one is from uh, Turkey, the city of Bursa. Uh, and I chose this particular picture because it illustrates uh, the nature of the school. It is uh, non-sectarian. It is a secular school. Uh, and especially, they emphasize educating girls. It includes both sciences, math, as well as arts and social science education. And in the uh, r lower right example, you see a little girl who won a medal in a social science Olympiad. And the, the other girls on the top, uh, they are in the music class. This is a hospital in Istanbul, and a volunteer doing uh, medical service in, in a country, probably in Africa. Uh, this is a hospital recently built in, uh, in the southeast of Turkey, the city of Şanlı Urfa, which is serving both southeast Turkey as well as northern Iraq and other countries in the region. And at the uh, smaller picture, you see the main architect of that project. Unfortunately, I forgot her name. Uh, this is a snapshot from the projects of the Kim Seyokmu Foundation, which, is, uh, which can be translated as, isn't there anybody listening? But it is a disaster relief and economic assistance organization. And they serve disaster uh, victims everywhere in the world, uh, from Peru to, to the tsunami, uh, to Japan and other places, to uh, Haiti. Uh, in the lower left, you see a doctor who is doing a pro bono free cataract surgery, again, in some place in Africa that I cannot remember right now. Uh, this is a very meaningful project in Sudan, in Darfur region. They are building, uh, rebuilding a village that was devastated. They are building the clinic and the school and all the other uh, institutions, places that the people of that uh, township need in Darfur. They uh, established the concept of the sister family so that the economic assistance to the families in need can be continued. It, it is just not a one-shot uh, help, but it continues through the sister family uh, concept. So this is one family that is benefiting from that uh, program. Uh, Mr. Gulen's pioneering efforts in interfaith dialogue was recognized by the religious minority leaders in Turkey. Uh, namely the Orthodox Christian, uh, the Armenian, both Greek and Armenian Orthodox leaders, and the Turkish Jewish community leader. Uh, they have uh, credited him for giving prominence to the religious minorities and also making it possible for the government to take certain steps uh, to remedy some of the sufferings of these religious minorities in Turkey. Uh, as important, perhaps more important, is the dialogue among the society who are uh, technically nominally Muslim but they subscribe to different ideologies and uh, political views, and often they don't want to talk to each other. So an organization called the Writers and Journalists Foundation established a platform, a meeting called Abant Platform after this little lake in Turkey, and it brings together, it is one of a kind meeting in Turkey, no other place where you can see the authors, intellectuals, uh, journalists from uh, so many kinds of political views and ideologies. The leftist, the rightist, the nationalist, the religious radical, uh, the Alevi, the Kurd, Turk, you find all of them in this meeting, which is very significant. Every year it happens in a different place. And all of these efforts have been recognized at the local, at the presidential, prime minister, minister level in Turkey, as well as by prominent figures around the world. Okay. I, some more examples from the schools, because I want to talk more about education as the main theme of this conference is peace building through education. Uh, this is a group of students from a school in Şanlı Urfa, which is in Southeast Turkey. This is the uh, kind of the uh, list of uh, the students who won, uh, who won the, the right to enter a very good school in Turkey. Uh, this is a college prep school, and these students that are listed over there uh, had the right to enter uh, schools of medicine or law or engineering that are top schools. And this college prep school is actually uh, in, in East Turkey, uh, which usually doesn't produce so many uh, students who can enter those uh, top schools. Okay. Uh, I should credit Dr. Martha Ann Kirk from San Antonio. Uh, she was the one who actually traveled to Southeast Turkey and Northern Iraq to picture some of the uh, projects that I'm showing to you today. Uh, you can see her uh, in the back over there with some students uh, of one of those schools in there, in, in Southeast Turkey. Uh, free tutoring services, again, in East and Southeast Turkey serve predominantly Kurdish students. Uh, their families cannot afford a, a paid 
tutoring service. So these centers in impoverished neighborhoods served tens of thousands of kids, giving them opportunity to enter high quality uh, colleges, high quality high schools uh, in their region or elsewhere in Turkey. And then you can see some of their teachers in the back. Uh, an important contribution is the education of the girls, especially in, again, South and, uh, Southeast Turkey and East Turkey. Uh, many of the parents are very conservative. Sometimes after a certain age, they don't trust the public institutions. So these institutions promise them an environment where their uh, daughters can get uh, training and education in a safe environment, uh, which would respect their family values. Let me come to the uh, concept of the committed core uh, and illustrating that with an example from Romania. I heard this story from a friend uh, who was an administrator in a school in, in Romania. Uh, the school was established by uh, his met volunteers, uh, individuals inspired by Mr. Gulen. And uh, it is known typically uh, as a Turkish school, you know, in these other countries where uh, movement participants start a school because they, are, they come from Turkey. It is typically known as a Turkish school. Uh, but the school students uh, predominantly are uh, Romanian uh, children. So there was one particular student uh, who had some disciplinary problems and it came to the point that the administration decided to actually expel the student. But at the moment they made that decision, uh, their, their reasoning was that uh, he is setting a bad example and if, if he don't do anything about it, they did everything else that could be done uh, to help solve the problem, but it could not be solved. Therefore, that was their last resort. But the moment they decided to expel the student, his father started a campaign to stop the administration from doing that. He called parliamentarians, he called the mayor, he called the governor, he called the president, and then the school uh, began getting calls from all these prominent people. At one point, the school administrators learned that uh, the father was actually lobbying for a uh, law to be passed that would prevent them from doing, uh, expelling the student. So finally, they said, okay, let's come, let's, let's talk. They invited the parent uh, to the school and they talked uh, about a solution. They said, uh, after all these disciplinary problems, we cannot keep your son in this school. Otherwise, he will set a bad example and we will be in a position, uh, we will be seen as not doing something about this problem. So we have to do something. Uh, the alternative we can offer you uh, besides expelling your son is to actually let him study in another campus, in another city. The father was happy. He immediately rented an apartment in this other city and uh, sent his son to that other city and everything uh, is, is fine. So the administrators finally asked, uh, you know, what was, what was the reason behind your being so vigorous uh, uh, you know, in trying to keep your son in this school? Because there are other good schools in this city. I mean, there are schools by you know, this nation or there is this other school that is so good in this field and so on and so forth. There are many other good schools. Why don't you send your son to this, uh, these other schools? The father said, I know that my, my son has a tendency to do drugs. I, I studied all those other schools that you mentioned. Nobody is as careful in keeping drugs away from the school environment as you are. If you expel my son, I lose my son. Okay. This is a striking example for me because this is in the country of Romania. Uh, historically, Romanians were not really friendly to Turks and vice versa. So uh, all of the Romanian parents there know this is a Turkish established school, although it's not a Turkish school. Uh, but they choose to keep their children in the school. They are happy with it. I think this is a primary example of shared values, such as preventing our youth from uh, self-destructing, uh, self-destroying habits. So it's an illustration that people from very different backgrounds, from different ethnic, religious, cultural backgrounds, can come together around shared values, shared goals. So what happened there and what happened in other places, uh, such as in uh, Southeast Turkey, uh, where the Kurdish uh, population, their children obviously need education, otherwise they fall prey to the PKK terrorist organization. The need is there, but it is not addressed because when there is a positive opportunity, when there is an establishment of an education institution, sometimes the PKK organization threatens them, threatens their life, they, atta they attack the school. So uh, teaching in that school, establishing that school, being an administrator in that school, it is a matter of life and death. But it is done there in Southeast Turkey. There are now tutoring centers and schools that are serving these kids and helping prevent them uh, falling prey to the terrorist organization. So what's going on here? Uh, my 
There are other stories that I could talk about, but in the interest of time, I'm going to limit to that too. You can probably think of other examples in your experience. But I think uh, what is going on there is this concept of the committed core. So the committed core uh, is a group of individuals who are uh, gathered around, uh, they, are, they, have a they have a sense of solidarity around a higher calling. In the first example, they have a sense of uh, solidarity around the calling that we have to provide a safe environment to these kids, away from drugs, away from bullying, away from violence, away from other harmful uh, phenomena. And this is not merely a salary paying job, this is something higher. And there is solidarity, that is, I'm not alone, you're not alone, that uh, administrator, teacher, or principal is not alone. Because if that, that person is alone, that is just a hero. Heroes sometimes succeed, sometimes they die without finishing the mission. But with a group, there is a higher chance, higher likelihood of actually accomplishing something. So what happens when there is a committed core in a place where there is a need, where there is a social need? What happens there? To illustrate that, I want you to, to imagine uh, an experiment you might have done. I don't know, uh, you know, we did it when I was a student, but... Now, the example of uh, absorption of sugar and crystallization of sugar. Uh, did, did, have you actually done this? Uh, could you raise your hand if you have done that experiment? Okay, maybe half of the room didn't do it. But let me, let me just remind you. Uh, basically, you put water in a container uh, that can be uh, heated, and then uh, you begin putting sugar, and you heat it. So as it gets warmer and warmer, you put more sugar, and it can absorb more sugar as it gets warmer. Uh, and then uh, you saturate it with sugar. And then you let it uh, cool down. It cools down, it cools down. And then at some point, you insert just a little bit of uh, sugar crystal into that uh, water. As you cool down, what you get is this. You get a big sugar crystal. Now this little crystal, that little crystal did not put that sugar in there. Right. The sugar was already in the water, but it helped make it a crystal. I think with the committed core, with the example of the committed core, uh, that's what's happening. When you have this group of teachers and administrators in this school, let's say in Southeast Turkey, their higher calling is we're going to provide high quality education to the Kurdish or otherwise impoverished kids in this neighborhood. And I am willing to die for this cause. And then there are other teachers maybe in that school or in the area who were not willing to do that, but when they see that committed core, they also get on board. So the effect of the committed core is to actually encourage, help everybody else who are well-meaning, but not necessarily uh, willing to take the first step, not necessarily willing to be the hero, to actually get into action. So all those principals and administrators and teachers who are well-meaning but not necessarily doing something, when they see the committed core doing their thing, they become on board and they also help build that school or maintain that school. So this, is this something that can be repeated? Absolutely. Uh, the Hizmet movement is one example. There are many, many other examples. I'm sure in your experience you have seen it. Uh, it takes at least a few individuals, solidarity, so that when you you know, get together, you can share your suffering, you can share agony, but also renew your hope, renew your solidarity, renew your vision uh, with your partner, with your friend. It takes a few individuals committed, have solidarity around the higher calling to accomplish that. Uh, if there is a way to actually spread this notion and this spirit, uh, I think we can solve many of the social problems uh, that we are suffering in our communities. And I hope that uh, each of us will become a member in one or more committed course. Thank you.